Matarema i ea hanea, na aire eselia, aranielia na tuluva, na care indumelia semende tambe erumande, amen anta sira alurea, masama ar amen absene, ucare mar, siva eme absene tieni ucarer, emen. Alametulia usa tiena malame, eteleta uculo, nasai. You could say that that was speaking in tongues, but that was actually the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, in the Elvish language from J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings because I'm a huge nerd. Fun fact, I could pretty fluently read, write, and speak Elvish in high school. My friends and I would actually pass notes in Elvish to keep messages private if teachers found them. I've always loved Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit was the first real non-kids book my dad read to me and gave me to read on my own as a kid. It's a series that I've read probably more than any other book series, except maybe the Bible, and that is just because I didn't start reading the Bible until much later. I loved everything about Lord of the Rings because every time I read it, it's like following a group of friends on the adventure of a lifetime, a quest that actually took them in the book over a year to complete. A lot can change in a year. That's very much like what we've been doing together. We've been journeying together, a fellowship of friends, a community, week after week for the better part of a year, on the adventure of a lifetime, getting to know Jesus, the church, and who God is calling us to be as his disciples. I hope a lot has changed for you for the better on this journey. We've come a long way. We started with our desires, the desires we all share for perfect love, belonging, truth, goodness, and beauty. We talked about how those desires point to a creator. And how we know that that creator is God who revealed himself to us, became incarnate in the person of Jesus, and how he founded and established the Catholic Church upon the apostles as the first bishops who passed their authority down to the bishops and priests of today. We've talked about how to live our faith out by following the commandments. We've talked about how to be with Jesus by having a relationship with him in prayer and the sacraments in the context of our church community. We've talked about becoming like Jesus by pursuing our vocation and our universal call to holiness, to become saints. And we end in this series in an episode uh, that premieres on the Feast of Pentecost, which is nicknamed the birthday of the church. It's when we remember the day the Holy Spirit first descended on the apostles in Acts chapter two and changed the course of history forever as they spread the good news far and wide, and rapidly built the Catholic Church. It says in Scripture, When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Today, that same spirit is still at work. That mission continues. And this episode, our final episode, we'll have a Q&A episode after this, but our final episode in this series serves as a reminder and an invitation for you to join that great mission, to allow the same Holy Spirit that the apostles received to work in your life so that you will be able to do what Jesus did, not by your own power or ability, but through the power of of the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself actually says this in scripture. He says, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. When we have the Holy Spirit and we live in that spirit, Jesus says that we will do greater works than he did. What? That is crazy. But that is the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, Jesus rose people from the dead. He healed people. He drove out demons. But that is all possible for anyone in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that the apostles received at Pentecost, and the same Holy Spirit we receive at baptism and confirmation. We've already talked about the Holy Spirit. He's the third person of the Trinity. He's God. And he's, it's the way God desires to manifest himself in our current time today. You know, he revealed himself as a father to the Jewish people in what we read as the Old Testament. He revealed himself 
as the son, Jesus, to them again and found his church. And what we read is the New Testament. And then he revealed himself as the Holy Spirit to guide, to sustain, and to empower the church and its ministers in our mission to share the good news to the ends of the earth. That's one God, three divine persons. Remember, that's kind of three ways of being. All three have always existed and always will exist together in perfect love and relationship. However, I think a big problem in our church today, when we compare it to the early church of the Bible, is that many of us have a very limited or no understanding of the Holy Spirit. You know, we get God the Father. He's the old guy in the sky. He's maybe a little more distant, the powerful creator. God the Son, we know. We have images of crucifixes. But the Holy Spirit is like, it's the peaceful bird or fire or wind or just a symbol of power, hope, or comfort. But we forget that the Holy Spirit is a person. A person who wants to animate your life and allow you to do incredible, transformational, life-altering, no, world-altering things through the power of that Spirit in your life and through you into the lives of others. It says in Scripture, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And as I've said before, the word there for power in Greek, is the word dynamos. It's the same root word we get the word dynamite from. We have an opportunity to have the explosive power of God at work in our lives each and every day, for our lives to look like the events we read in the Gospels and Acts of the Apostles. You may not think it is possible, but that is what the Holy Spirit can and will do in your life if you let Him. Beginning at our baptism and more fully at our confirmation, We receive the power of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the Catholic faith. We have unique gifts and talents given to us by God that allow us to do this in a unique and unrepeatable way that no one else can. So the proper names for these things, these gifts and talents from the Holy Spirit, are called charisms. Now, there are certain things we are just naturally good at, but if we did them every day, we would get burnt out. These are regular gifts and talents. So I'm very naturally gifted at math. But if you sat me down and asked me to do math every day, I would die. I don't like it. But I'm very good at it. However, there are other things that we are gifted with that when we do them, we're energized, we're passionate, we could do them forever, and they make a difference for people. Those are charisms. So for me, those things are like music, um, teaching different gifts like that. I could do them every single day. I would never get tired. There are many different charisms listed in scripture in different places. Here are some of them. Administration, celibacy, craftsmanship, encouragement, evangelism, faith, giving, healing, helps, hospitality, intercessory prayer that's praying for others, knowledge, leadership, mercy, being a missionary, music, pastoring, service, teaching, voluntary poverty, wisdom, writing, discernment of spirits, prophecy, speaking in tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. When Jesus calls the first disciples, this is interesting, that he, he looks at who they are and the gifts that they've been given. And it says in the Gospels, Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. He did not say, I will make you teachers or speakers. He says, fishers. He keeps their gifts the same, but he calls them to use them for a deeper purpose. That's the same invitation he has for us. And so if you saw that list of charisms as I read it, and you resonated with some, maybe those are some things that God is calling you to use in a deeper way to glorify him, to help others know about the joy of a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I'd encourage you to pray and consider, or maybe even look for an online assessment I have some that I can send you if you email me, but there are many different ways that you can discern what some of those things might be and begin to actively choose to live them out in a deeper way than you may be now. There are also extraordinary charisms or manifestations of the Holy Spirit that are supernatural. So for instance, Padre Pio, St. Padre Pio, he died in 1968, so he was not um, alive that long ago. And he was able to perform extraordinary things through the power of the Holy Spirit. He was able to work miracles, perform healings. He was able to read people's hearts. He's reported to be able to bilocate, be in two places at once, to levitate. 
And he manifested the stigmata, the wounds of Jesus Christ actually appeared on his body. When Padre Pio died, his body actually never decayed. He's called an incorrupt saint. And this has actually happened to over 100 saints throughout the 2000 year history of the church. Their remains have been miraculously preserved from decay without the help of chemicals or technology. They're called the incorruptibles. Go look them up. The Holy Spirit never ceases to give life. That's why we call Pentecost the birthday of the church, because a birthday celebrates and remembers the creation of a new life. That is the power of the Holy Spirit at work. When we read the works of Jesus and the apostles in Scripture, we may not realize that the Holy Spirit is still producing those works through people today in the name of Jesus. Demons are still being driven out. People are still being miraculously healed. People are still working miracles, speaking previously unknown facts and truths to people prophetically. And they're making the power and glory of God known to others. I've seen it happen, and it has actually happened through me. In fact, I was once on a prayer team at an event at a local church, and I was paired with a young woman who I didn't really know that well. And we were there. Nobody was really coming up to us for prayer. And it got toward the end of this time, and um, I just felt the Holy Spirit say to me, you need to tell this girl that she needs to forgive her parents, and you need to talk to her about that, because I just felt the Holy Spirit really compelling me to say this thing to her. Now, I didn't know if that was true, what was going on in her life. I didn't know very much about her at all. Um, But I turned to her and I said, you know, I don't know if this is going to make any sense to you, but I just feel really compelled by God right now to tell you that uh, you need to forgive your parents. And we ended up in this long conversation about um, some things that had been going on. We were able to pray together, and it impacted her greatly because the Holy Spirit just inspired me to say that. And I was faithful, and I said yes, and I blurted out something that could have made me look like a fool. But when we're faithful to the Holy Spirit, we will be able to fulfill the mission God has called us to in the places where he puts us. We can do small little acts that seemingly could account to being miracles to other people. We fulfill the mission of our confirmation, which is to use our unique charisms to spread and defend the Catholic faith. So I want to invite you, if you are ready after this whole journey, to say yes. The Holy Spirit will come upon you in a life-changing way. And it can be overwhelming. It's been said that truly being open to the power of the Holy Spirit is like trying to take a drink from a fire hose. The Holy Spirit has power But that power is to bring new life to you, to the church and to the world. But it is a life-changing choice. When you truly allow the power of the Holy Spirit to be unleashed in your life, there is no going back. We would not want to rush into a marriage, which is why we date, we get engaged, we prepare for marriage, and we plan a life together. Being a disciple of Jesus who lives in the Spirit is a serious, lifelong commitment too. You may have been baptized and confirmed already, And maybe you thought like, well, nothing life-altering happened to me. Well, remember, God only goes where he's truly invited. And when there are walls up, barriers and obstacles in place that we've constructed, he will respect them. So the question is, are you ready to be completely open to him now? Are you ready to answer the call of discipleship? To be with Jesus, to become like Jesus, to do what Jesus did through the power of the Holy Spirit? I would encourage you to start where you are. In your current relationships, your current commitments and responsibilities, be a walking symbol of Jesus, a walking symbol of Catholicism. Secondly, think about your parish community. How can you get involved and give back at your church to offer your charisms for the good of the community? What's the next step of involvement? How will you continue not only to serve, but also to grow and learn? How can you continue your formation? Now is the time, the pivotal decision. You've made it to the end of this series. You've heard the basics of the Catholic faith, what we believe, how to put it into practice, how to live it out as a disciple of Jesus. Now is the time to put all of that into practice. Jesus is calling, walking up to you and saying, come and follow me to lead you on the adventure of a lifetime to your own version of the upper room, of your own Pentecost to receive new life in the spirit. Are you ready? Because the choice is yours. But if you are, I would invite you just wherever you are to pray with me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, I invite you to send your Holy Spirit upon every person watching or listening to this episode and hearing these words right now. 
I ask that you rebuke any spirit of fear, worry, doubt, or anxiety and cast it out in your name, the name of Jesus. Help them to know that you have called them. You have chosen them. You have given them unique gifts that the world needs and that no one else can give. I pray, Lord, for a spirit of openness, of boldness, of revival in each one of their lives. I pray that you would work miracles, that you would bring healing spiritually, mentally, and physically. If they have any infirmity, that you would send your Holy Spirit upon them and heal them now in this moment, Lord. And especially in the ways that they experience and struggle with sin, doubt, selfishness, worry, darkness, and any form of oppression from the evil one and his demons, that you would bind and renounce all evil in their midst and cast it out in this moment by the power of your name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit upon them from head to toe, filling them and animating them, bringing life, vibrancy, energy, healing, and joy. Allow every area of brokenness and emptiness to be filled with the power of your presence, Lord, in this very moment. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful in the same spirit Help us to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It has been an honor to journey with you. If I can answer your questions or pray for you in any way, please never hesitate to reach out. There will be a Q&A episode from all of the questions we've received over this past, or this first uh, publishing of this series. Uh, but feel free to send those also in the future and look out for that Q&A episode. And so if we do not meet in this life again, or even for the first time, may we walk in the Spirit together to meet in the next. Nayeru lai manata.